Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com. So I was doing a review of the Roots Magic software on a general backup of my ancestry tree. And I was giving it a full test on various aspects, what it backed up when you use the software to pull a backup of your tree down from ancestry. And in this review, which is a lengthy review, I just go to the precise details that it's not a complete and perfect copy, but it's close. One of the aspects that surprised me, because I wasn't expecting it, was that when you use Roots Magic, Magic Essentials, which is the free version, to download your Ancestry tree, not only does it bring down your own photos and documents that you uploaded to that tree, it also brings down all the images associated with the Ancestry source records. I hadn't expected that, and when I saw them all in a local folder, I thought, well, that's really useful. And that may be something that somebody might want to use this tool purely to do. And it's free. It's available in the free version. So this video is just going to walk through getting the free version of Roots Magic and running a backup, taking down all, all the media, all photos, all documents, all images down into your local folder to have them as an offline resource. The installation piece is round about here. I'm just going to go and get the software. So you need to go to the Roots Magic website. There's a link in the description below and in the in my article. And this is Roots Magic Essentials, which is the free version of their standard commercial paid software. So I'm just going to click on the free download. Uh, just click download. I'm going to take the Windows version. Bring up my downloads folder. I'm just going to run that. Accept the agreement. Install. I'm not going to take this extra piece. I'm not sure what it does and I'm purely using the free version. Click next, finish and launch. Right, so I'm just going to take the free version here. Up pops news, close on that. So I'm just going to click through the steps that it takes that all you want to do is connect the software to your ancestry tree and do a full download. For that we're going to create a new file. New file name I will say my ancestry tree. You don't need to do, change any of the any of the defaults here. I'm just going to click OK. OK, so it's opened up a new file. You've got an empty tree here in a horizontal view and this is the main menu. And yes, it looks like it's straight out of 1995, but that's OK. First thing I need to do is connect to my ancestry tree. So it's a little bit odd, but internet. And then first item here is tree share for ancestry. This will allow us to connect to our ancestry tree. So it's asking for a sign in. So here it's giving us two choices. On the left, we can upload to a new ancestry tree. I want to download from an existing ancestry tree. So click on download an ancestry tree. And here it's actually showing me a list of my trees up on ancestry. And I want to take my full tree so we can see how it works with a reasonably sized tree. And then click download ancestry tree. So it gives us a progress bar. Okay, I got a few error messages at times using the software. I'll send that error report and it just keeps going. This happened to me before and it just kept going and completed to the end. Okay, that's done and that took about four minutes and the last 10% was the longest amount of time. It was probably half the time. Then it got to 99% and it sat on that for about a minute. So what it's showing me here, and I'm not going to bother too much with it, it's, it gives you a side-by-side -side of view of the version of a particular person in Roots Magic and a particular tree profile in Ancestry. You can see that on the, on the right, it's in, in An Ancestry, and it's got some source records, census records, etc. My article goes through a very detailed check of a demo tree. There's a few problems that I mentioned in the article, but they were very specific. So I'm, I'm going to close this window, and here is my tree. So what I actually want to see is the media gallery. So over here on lists, here is the media gallery, locally now. So you're working with the local file, with the local database. What Roots Magic is doing here is actually creating little thumbnail images of the images that it's downloaded. I'm just going to pause now and then I'll tell you how long it took. Okay, so that took about three minutes. And what I'm looking at now are thumbnails 
of the images that is downloaded, of the media that's downloaded. And I notice that some of these are the PDF documents that I uploaded. But you see these here and here, they are ancestry source images. So if I just look at this one here, look over the right, this is a source image from a an Irish baptismal register. And if I scroll down a little bit to maybe some of the American records, yeah. So if I click on this one here, this is a World War II draft card. Just double click on it and it opens and you can see what it is. It's, it's the registration card. But if you look down here on the right, it it is telling me the full file location of where these images are. So I'm just going to open this folder, which is on my laptop. And there you go, Windows Explorer. So if I just go and display this at details level, what you can see is some PDF documents. I uploaded those. See these documents that are all nicely named, like Death of Mrs. Philip Brady. What is, that's a JPEG. So that is one of the set of photographs or, pho or images that I uploaded to my ancestry tree. And I wasn't surprised that they came down. Now we get to something a little different. These cryptically named images with numerics in them. What I'll do is I'll just grab the actual image that I'd been looking at within Roots Media, the exact one, and I'll open that. And there you go. This has opened up in the photo viewer of my laptop. So all the images are there. It's just unfortunate that they are named in some cryptic way that is, unfortunately, given the way that they're named, it's going to be a little bit difficult to use them. So I figured, well, it would be possible if you can get into the Roots Magic database that's local on your machine, you could simply work through the person list, the index of all the persons, check to see if they've got media associated with them, and let's say copy and rename the image to include the year and include the name of the person it's associated with and any other details that you want to put into the file name. I thought, oh yeah, I could do that. But before I jump in to do it, I did a, an internet search to see if anybody else had actually done what I wanted. And um, yes, yes, they had. So I came across this particular blog, SQLite Tools for Roots Magic. So whoever it is, has written a blog article called Rename Cryptic File Names for Citation Media. And he's put together a script which I think does the job. Okay, so Tom Holden has provided a set of scripts that prepends, adds in advance, to the media file names, the name of one of the persons to whom the citation applies, their birth year, death year, and the name of the source cited. So that's going to give me quite a long file name, but that's okay. Now he's saying renaming the file has no apparent effect on tree share operations. My intention was to take a copy of the files, leave them unchanged in the Roots Magic folder, copy the entire folder, and rename a copy of each file. Tree share media rename step one dot SQL. Uh, it's a SQL script, so I'm going to need SQLite Manager to connect to the SQLite database. So I'm just going to click pause because it's been a while since I used SQLite and I'm not sure where this database is in my local machine. Okay, just a Google search for SQLite Manager. I, I don't actually have SQLite on this particular laptop, so here's the .org. I'll just go and get it. So I'm going to install this browser application which will let me connect to the Roots Magic database that's on my local machine. I will take a look at the SQL and I will verify that it's not doing anything untoward. Next. What do I want? Uh, what the heck. But I'll just take the complete package and then I'll probably just get rid of it. Next. Install. Okay. So it's completed. Click finish. Will it start up for me automatically? Nope. Okay. So SQL there we go, DB Browser. Okay, so this is DB Browser for SQLite. Is there a connect? No, what I need to do is click Open Database, and I guess I just need to go and look for this, a file that is the Roots Magic database. Pull up Roots Magic Properties. I'm just looking for the location of the database. Yeah. So, Properties. Ah, there we go. There is the location of the database. So that's just a folder 
Oh, it's putting. It's actually just stuck it in. Did I? I possibly specify this, did I? But it's just in my documents folder called my ancestry tree dot rmgc. Okay. Well, we'll see if um, will DB Browser open that documents or files my ancestry tree. Will it, will it go with that? Oh, there it go. I wasn't sure it would open that, but yes, it opens that fine. So here are all the tables. Now, all I want to do, I want to run a script, which is going to be execute SQL. I need to paste the script in here and click run, probably. Okay, so the script, doing this on the fly, folks, and I think it's been 10 years since I used SQLite. Where is the script? This is the first one. Tree share media rename step one. Just open it in Notepad for now. Okay, so what does this bad baby do? So I'm just checking that this SQL script is operating solely within the SQLite database. But all this thing is doing, this is using pure SQL all the way. So what I'm going to do, Control A, Control C for copy, and just Control V, there's that script. I'm going to click Execute All. Okay, let's do it table in this database requires a special collection function so it's it's an informational message do you want to proceed and yes yes I do and again and again is this gonna keep on well that I clicked that four times yeah it popped up for me four times so so saying here execution finished with errors I'm just gonna keep going I'm not I'm not gonna try and troubleshoot this duplicate tab rename tab close tab can you not have tabs side by side What's the ah, open tab? <laughs> okay, so now I've got a second tab, SQL2, named appropriately for what this says is step two. So tree share re media rename step two. Okay, I'll just have another quick scan to see what this does. So I'll control A, copy all of that, back to the DB browser, in this tab, the second tab here, control V. So I'm gonna click run on this, execute all. I suspect that's not good. Oh, I did not want to have to troubleshoot this. Okay, I'm going to have to troubleshoot this. Right, so well, that didn't work as well as I hoped. I'm going to look into it because I do want to achieve this. Keep tuned, keep subscribe, and the moment I get a working version of these scripts which do what I want to achieve, I'll throw up another video with a step-by-step -step as to how to get the file names into some kind of naming convention.